Starting us off here at number 10 is Black Hag's Cell. Found in a secluded hollow in Limerick County, Ireland, lies a mess of crumbling ruins and the ghost of a satanic nun said to have been buried alive. And if that isn't just the perfect setup for a horror movie. As the legend goes, sometime during the 16th century, the demonic nun would sneak out of her monastery at night to the nearby abbey. It was here she performed her satanic rituals such as sacrificing animals or placing curses on the locals to please the devil. But one day during a battle between rival houses, the nun was wounded by an arrow and fell unconscious. Believing her to be dead, they buried the nun immediately, but soon farmers started hearing screams coming from her burial plot. At first they brushed it off as nothing, but as the screams continued day in and day out, they rushed to exhume the body, worried they buried her too soon. But they were too late. The nun had died and was left with bloody fingers from trying to scratch her way out. It's said at night her screams can still be heard echoing over the hills, and locals don't dare go near in fear that she will possess anyone who steps foot on the land. Coming in at number 9, Hoya Bashu Forest. Known as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, this forest is the breeding ground of unexplained disappearances as well as countless paranormal phenomena. The forest, in fact, has so many terrifying tales surrounding it that many locals refuse to even enter it. But according to those brave enough to try, they were attacked by something indescribable, followed by hours of vomiting, nausea, migraines, and left covered in scratches, bruises, and even burns. Its most haunting legend is that of the forest girl, who allegedly entered at just five years old and disappeared. Five years later, she emerged from the woods wearing the same dress as the day she went missing, and she had no memories or recollection of going missing or what had happened to her in the last five years. Some believe that the forest is possessed by a satanic cult. A tour guide once said to have found a group of 60 people gathered in a clearing looking as if they were trying to open a gateway to another dimension, while others think it could be aliens. In 1968, a military technician released a photo he claimed to be a UFO, which was promptly hidden from the public before he was fired. And I mean, it's not every day someone from the military is confirming a UFO sighting. Well, whether it's haunted by a demon or a spot frequented by aliens, either way, I have no interest in checking it out for myself. Next up at number 8 here is the Snector House. Once home to the Snector family in the 1980s, they thought they'd found the perfect spot as it was a fairly affordable house and close to the hospital where their son was being treated. But it wasn't until after they were all settled that they learned the house had operated as a mortuary for several decades since the 1920s. At first, everything seemed alright, but soon they discovered old equipment from the funeral home in their basement. Now this raised an eyebrow, but they brushed it off and didn't think much of it. That was until they uncovered that their backyard still contained many of the buried corpses, along with eerie photographs of the corpses hidden away in nooks and crannies. Soon they were being haunted by evil spirits, routinely hearing haunting noises and even seeing full bodied apparitions. The mother claims that when she was mopping the basement, the water would turn red as if it were blood, or that she would catch objects flying around the room while lights would aggressively flicker. At the time, there were rumors circulating that the formal funeral directors were guilty of which led to the house becoming haunted by an evil presence, seeking revenge on all that lived in the house for eternity. Coming in at number 7 is the Ancient Ram Inn. Rumored to be the most haunted building in England, there are no shortage of terrifying entities that haunt these grounds. Supposedly, the inn lies atop two ley lines, one of which directly intersects with Stonehenge. And if that was enough cause for concern, it was also built over a five 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. According to witnesses, a witch, a poltergeist, a succubus, and an incubus haunt the property, but many think it is much, much more. Legend has it that there are so many demons haunting the grounds that visitors routinely had to get exorcisms after their visit to the inn. Then, in the 1960s, a man named John Humphreys bought the house and decided to make it his own. He had heard the rumors, but believed they were just that 
rumors. But on his first night, he felt something strange. There was something watching him, something very, very evil. Despite his inclination that a dark entity possessed his house, he continued to live there, often recounting paranormal sightings like strange voices, orbs of light appearing out of thin air, and said that once a force even grabbed him by the arm and dragged him around the living room. Even so, John remained until his dying days. And I mean, you do you, but if it were me, I would have been gone after the first night. Coming in at number 6 is Castle Huska. Located in North Prague, this castle was built back in the 13th century. Now there are a few things that are strange about this castle. Firstly, many of its windows are fake. They are simply glass panes in front of complete walls. Secondly, it lacks common things. There is no water source, no kitchen, and for years after its initial construction, there were no occupants. Lastly, the castle was built in a remote area. It was not near any trading routes, nor did it possess any kind of strategic value. That is because it was built for one reason and one reason only, to cover a large hole in the ground. Now you might be asking yourself, what's so bad about that? Well, according to legend, the hole was actually a gateway to hell, and Satan himself was said to appear at this very spot. In an attempt to close off the gateway, the castle was constructed atop the hole, hoping to seal it for eternity. But during World War II, German soldiers settled in and used the castle to conduct experiments of the occult variety, and it's believed that these rituals brought out the evil spirits back into our realm. Today both Satan and some of the evil soldiers haunt the hallowed halls, and some say if you listen closely, you might just be able to hear the scratching of demons trying to join them. Coming in at number 5, the Rose Hall Great House. According to legend, a woman named Annie Palmer moved to Jamaica in the early 1800s. Annie was young, but she was smart and had one big goal in mind, marry rich. While she may have looked sweet and innocent, Annie was actually a renowned voodoo practitioner and became known as the White Witch by the locals. Anyway, after a short while in Jamaica, she met Mr. John Palmer, the owner of the Rose Hall estate estate and wasted no time locking him down. After the wedding, Annie moved into the estate with her husband, but not long after, he mysteriously died. As it turns out, it was not so mysterious after all, as Annie had poisoned her husband, and she continued to repeat this pattern twice more while ruling over the estate. And it wasn't just her husbands that Annie was cruel to, she was notoriously brutal to the slaves on the plantation, never hesitating to any one of them that stepped out of line or dared question her. Then there were her lovers. Annie was rumored to have copious amounts of lovers, many of which were enslaved to her, and incidentally, this would also be her downfall. After one of his family members, one of her enslaved lovers, Taku, snuck into Annie's room and her in her sleep. Taku was also a voodoo practitioner and fearing she would haunt him after death, placed a curse on her grave to keep her entrapped. But it's said the ritual was never completed, so the ghost of Annie escapes each night, wreaking havoc on trespassers and terrifying all that see her. Next up at number 4 is the Ostrich Inn. During the 17th century, this inn was owned by a man named John Jarman and his wife. The two welcomed travelers from far and wide, but had a special appetite appetite for wealthy customers. When such folks wandered into their inn, they took very kindly to them, offering them free ale and a special room above the kitchen, adorned with much nicer furnishings than the rest. But as I'm sure you've guessed, there was a huge catch. You see, the bed in this special room was nailed to the floor, and under the bed was a secret trap door. During the night, while their wealthy visitor was sleeping, the husband and wife would pull a lever in their kitchen, dropping the trap door and shooting the poor trap traveler into a vat of boiling water. Once they were dead, they would rob the wealthy traveler and then hide their body in the cellar. And they might have gotten away with it too if it weren't for Thomas Cole. Cole was a wealthy clothing maker and was swindled by the couple before in the same way as many before him. But luckily, at the time of the incident, his horse happened to break loose and was wandering the town. Folks recognized the horse and thought that Cole must have fallen off, and so a search party began, eventually discovering him dead in the inn. The couple was arrested and sentenced to be hanged, but prior to their death, they confessed to 
60 people in their inn. To this day, many have witnessed their evil spirits haunting the halls as well as all the souls whose lives were lost. Coming in at number three is the Demon House. Once the home of Mr. Cranmer, he claims that he and his family lived in this house of horrors for 18 years before an exorcism in 2006 finally drove the demon away. Cranmer says that over the years he would watch helplessly as blood dripped from his walls and invisible hands assisted him and his family, fearing each day that it might be his last. But where did this possession begin? Well, Cranmer believed it all started with Dr. James Mahan, a former tenant of the home. Dr. Mahan was an alcoholic who routinely performed illegal operations on women in his basement. But not because he was looking to help these women, no, it was because he had a deal with a demon. Cranmer says the demon who haunts the house is Moloch, a demon who feeds off of sacrifices, and that Moloch had possessed Dr. Mahan in order to feed off his basement operations. Once Dr. Mahan died, there was no one left to please this demon, and so he tortured all the families who moved in after, hoping to be able to scare them into giving him what he wanted. Luckily, Mr. Cranmer was able to rid the house of Moloch, and his family escaped the torture unpossessed. Coming in at number two, the house of death. Once the home of actress and poet Jan Bryant Bartell in the 1960s, the house holds a reputation for housing some of the most demonic entities in all of New York City. Within weeks of moving in, Jan knew something was deeply wrong with the house. She would often feel the touch of an icy hand across the back of her neck or hear footsteps follow her around the empty house. The house always reeked like something was rotting or dying, and her dogs were always barking into nothingness. Then one day, one of her dogs died, as if out of nowhere, so she decided to take matters into her own hands and called on a psychic medium. But this only angered the demons living inside. During the first session, the medium went into an unusual trance, speaking about the hundreds of bodies buried underneath the house. Jan knew it wasn't the medium speaking, and it was then that she learned how many people had been or taken their own lives while living here. Then all of a sudden, the medium's eyes bulged out of her head and she started shouting that she would never leave in a deep demonic voice. The encounter was enough for Jan to leave and never return. A few years later, she published a book about her life in the haunted house just weeks before she sadly took her own life. Still think it's just a coincidence? Years later, in 1987, a father brutally killed his own daughter in a fueled rage, and many believe that he could have been possessed by the very same demon that Jan ran away from all those years before. And last up for you today in our number one spot, the Armstrong Street House. In 1970, a couple named Anne and Roger Brock moved their family into a beautiful four bedroom house in Kokomo, Indiana. The family didn't have a ton of money, but they were able to score the house for just five grand, which in hindsight, could have been a clue. Mere hours after the family moved in, they began to experience strange things. Lights were flickering and noises were appearing, but they brushed it off as nothing. Then one night, one of the daughters, Lana, was awoken by sudden shaking all around her bed. She thought it was an earthquake at first, but then she looked out her window to see a strange man, seemingly drenched, standing right beside her bedroom window, staring at her. Lana freaked out, but then as quickly as he appeared, he was gone. This became routine for poor Lana, and demons started haunting her every night. One night, she heard a knock at her door, and assuming it was her parents, she went to answer it, only to have her mouth covered by an invisible hand. She tried to scream, but the hand wouldn't let her. Suddenly, her dog appeared and distracted the entity, allowing Lana to scream for help, but this only angered the spirit. To get back at her, it picked up the dog and threw it out the window, sending it plunging to its demise. Years later, they learned that someone was killed in the house, which could explain the torture, but still, not a single member of the family has ever dared return. Starting off at number 10 is the Stone Line Inn in Oklahoma. This inn was originally built as a Victorian mansion in 1907 for F. E. Houghton, but it was also used as a funeral home for an eight year period when the Houghton family struggled financially. The embalming table from that time is still on display at what is 
now a bed and breakfast. Possibly as a result of the death that was within it previously, guests have reported strange noises throughout the house. Guests also say they have seen the daughter Augusta who died in the house from whooping cough and Effie Hewton himself smoking a pipe. But we got more ghosts coming for you at number 9 Hotel Europe in Vancouver. Now this building was completed in 1909 to be the prominent hotel in town, and it was, up until Hotel Vancouver opened up in 1916. After it lost the majority of the favourable clientele, the hotel fell into disrepute and into a brothel. It eventually became a heritage building with a storefront on the main level though. So over this time, the areaways underground were filled up. These were paths underground that connected to the sidewalk so that freight could be loaded into the cellars in the basement. During the construction one of the time the Hotel Europe changed, a contractor had a frightening experience. Apparently, he was working by himself on some repairs in the cellar, close up to a bricked up areaway door. The contractor left the cellar briefly just to fetch something, and when he returned, his tools were just scattered all around the floor. He then heard scratching noises coming from behind the brick wall and felt a bad presence. Scared and confused, he quickly gathered up his tools and left the cellar as fast as he could. After that, he flat out refused to work there again. Sometimes scratching noises can be heard coming from the other side of the bricked up areaway, and some people dispute, yeah, it could be mice. But you have to remember, the areaways were completely filled in. Bricks and concrete. Later on, after all this, the owner of a poster store on the main floor of the building saw a figure in a black coat and flat cap in her store after closing the store on security camera. When she went to check on the possible lost customer, when she swear no one was there when she closed it, he was gone. She was. Rightly so, shaken and closed up the store quickly that night, not sure if she was seeing things. But let's move on to number 8, the Crescent Hotel, the hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. So this used to be one of the most luxurious resorts when it opened in 1886. But tough economic times hurt the Crescent Hotel and it closed in the 1930s. In 1937, Norman Baker opened its doors once again and turned it into Baker's Cancer Curing Hospital as a man without a medical degree. It was discovered that this fraud physician was indeed running a scam. Today, the hospital has returned to its former luxurious glory, but some spirits from the past still lurk around. Some spirits Spirits included are some of Baker's old patients, including a commonly spotted Theodora. She is most often spotted fumbling her keys outside room 419. Another spirit seen around the property is a man who helped build it, Michael, an Irish stonemason who fell to his death. If you happen to stay there, they have nightly ghost tours that end at the morgue, a morgue that still remains intact from its time as a hospital, and it is said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. At number 7, Banff Springs Hotel, Alberta. So the Fairmont Banff Springs was actually one of the first railway hotels built built in the 19th century by the Canadian Pacific Railway. It was built as a part of the aim to attract travellers westward. So the hotel denies that it is haunted, but that doesn't stop the guests who stay there from sharing the encounters that they have had. The long standing story is that in 1932 there was a bride who died while falling down one of the hotel's grand stone staircases. Guests say they have seen her still in her wedding dress dancing alone in the Cascade Ballroom. Another hotel the Canadian Pacific Railway built is our number 6, the Royal York Hotel. So this one was opened in 1929 right across from the Union Station in Toronto. At the time, and to this day, it's one of Toronto's most grand hotels, like even the Queen has stayed there. But just like the Banff Springs Hotel, it is home to its fair share of ghost stories. People talk about hearing the sounds of children running up and down the halls, but once they check to see who is making all that noise, the hallway falls silent. It's not just some tricksters running around. Also, people underneath the now closed off Crystal Ballroom report hearing voices and music coming from the vacant space. One guest even wrote on a Toronto blog that some chandeliers on the floor below it were trembling and the ceiling shook. So maybe some fancy ghosts took up residence after the ballroom was closed off permanently due to building and fire code violations. You know, our loss is some fancy ghost game. At number 5, the Story Inn. This inn was built in 1851 in Indiana, and it truly does house quite the story. It is the only structure still left in a mining town called Story that was left inoperative after the Great Depression. It was restored and revitalized in the 1960s as a bed and breakfast, and it does have a frequent spectral guest. The Blue Lady. In the inn's guest books, there were records of a ghost called the Blue Lady who is believed to be the wife of the town's original founder, Dr. George Story. The guests of the inn record that her eyes are a hypnotic blue and she smells like cherry tobacco. To summon her, those who stay turn on the blue light beside the bed in what used to be her own room. Today, it's called the Blue Lady Room. So if she's feeling particularly nice, she will even leave behind blue items in that room if you are there to stay. At number 4, we have Mount Washington Hotel. Back in 1902, a businessman named Joseph Stickney built the hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. The following year after completion, unfortunately, he passed away. It is believed that his widowed wife Carolyn now haunts the halls of the hotel, reliving the moments they had together. 
Hotel staff have reportedly spotted her descending the stairs for dinner and have also noticed lights inexplicably turning on and off in one of the towers. Sometimes she has been spotted standing on the balcony looking off into the distance lost in thought. Her four poster maple bed is still in room 314 and has become well known as the best place to see her. Guests have reported waking up to find a woman sitting at the end of their bed, slowly brushing her hair. I wonder if she's staring at them or off in the distance, because one of them is much creepier than the other. At number three, La Fonda on the Plaza Santa Fe. While the structure of La Fonda was built in 1922, records say it's on the site of the city's first hotel dating all the way back to the early 17th century. So the New Mexico Hotel was a favored place for travelers headed west and is home to a couple of guests that have passed on and refused to leave. The first ghost is the former Chief Justice of the Territorial Supreme Court, John P. Slough. He was to death in the hotel lobby and his spirit is said to have never left. The second specter seen is a distraught salesman. The man apparently jumped into the hotel well after gambling and losing on a bad hand. He has been seen emerging from the hotel fountain. Which I have to say, if you're gambling and you lose a bad hand, one, don't gamble, maybe, and two, only have good hands, that's what I do. Number two, the Prince of Wales Hotel, Niagara on the Lake, Ontario, Canada. This hotel was built in 1864 and went through a few other names before becoming the Prince of Wales Hotel in 1901. It was expanded in the 70s to add additional wings on either side, but the new additions blend in, so the original architecture looks the same. Also, tourists can't really notice. So even with all the changes to the hotel, the resident ghost has not been deterred. She already spent so much time there. 200 years. So Molly Maguire was in a wooden house where the hotel is today when Americans laid siege on the town. An American soldier was tasked with searching the house and found a dark figure looking out the window. Thinking it was a British soldier, he ran the figure through with his bayonet. But it was Molly. The soldier ran off, telling no one of his mistake of killing an innocent woman. Today, the spirit of Molly is said to haunt room 207, the approximate location of Molly's bedroom. People report waking up to footsteps echoing in their dark and empty room and random lights being on when they swear they turn them off. One guest even checked out because all the haunted happenings were just too much for them. Number one, the Red Lion Inn in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. So all the way back in 1773, a small tavern was established on the corner that would eventually house the Red Lion Inn. In 1896, while it was known as the Stockbridge House, the entire property burned down in a fire. It was rebuilt and opened the next year, then continued to change ownership and names throughout the years. With all of that history, the inn is said to have quite a bit of spiritual activity. Guests often see figures, including a young girl carrying flowers or a man in a top hat on the premises. But room 301 is the room to go if you really want a creepy encounter. One man recorded his experience on TripAdvisor. In the middle of the night on three different occasions, I woke up feeling my toes being tugged on and someone scratching my hand. I also felt as if someone or something was under the covers with me at one point. Then at 9 a.m. in the morning, I woke up when I heard the maid knocking at the door. She opened the room with the key, walked in and headed for the bathroom. I heard the footsteps come out of the bathroom and stop by the bed. Then it suddenly felt as though someone was fluffing up the comforter as if trying to make up the bed on the left hand side. As hard as I tried, I could not move and I could not speak. When I looked up, I realized that I was in the room alone and no one had been there. If I was that guy, I would check out of that place immediately, but he was there for a business conference and had to deal with it. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Fairmont Banff Spring Hotel. This Canadian hotel is absolutely legendary, but despite the spooky tales, tourism remains as high as ever. This hotel was built in 1888 in order to encourage tourists and to sell train tickets, and while it certainly did just that, this chateau-style hotel was only the icing on the cake to a trip to the gorgeous Rocky Mountains and all that waits in the Banff National Park. Through the years though, several guests have had some haunting stories to tell which included reports of ghost sightings. These ghosts are thought to reside in the hotel and they include a bride who allegedly fell down the stone staircase during her wedding which led to her untimely departure, or the legend of Sam the Bellman. This legend has it that Sam worked at the hotel until 1975 and before leaving he claimed that he would come back to haunt the hotel. It is said that his spirit can be seen in the hotel helping people with their bags. In our number 9 spot today we have Zunantinich. This location sits deep in the jungles of Belize, located less than a mile from the border of Guatemala. It has an unbelievably rich history as it is an ancient Maya ruin that has been abandoned for the last thousand years. In 1890 this site had its modern discovery and since then it has been an important site for archaeology, an amazing tourist attraction, but also it is said to be a hot spot for the paranormal. It is 
is said that the site is haunted by a female ghost. She has black hair and glowing red eyes. Referred to as the Stone Lady, it is said that she was first spotted by one of the first research teams in the area in 1893, and since then she has been frequently seen by the tallest building complex called El Castillo. No one exactly knows the story behind the Stone Lady considering the history of this site, but many believe she may have been a part of a ritual sacrifice, which was a tradition and spiritual practice done by the ancient Maya civilization. In our number 8 spot today we have Berg Elts. This German castle dates back to 1157, so it's no surprise that there are many myths and legends surrounding it. The most common tale is that of a young countess named Agnes. Agnes was betrothed or promised to another noble, but after meeting him, she called off their future wedding. Apparently this guy was the worst, and also even if he wasn't, no one could really blame her for calling off a wedding she didn't want to have. But of course, things quickly went awry. This noble guy was mad that she had rejected him, so the scorned lover laid siege to the castle. Agnes fought to defend her home, but she passed away during the battle. That is the story behind why her spirit is said to haunt the Berg Elts castle. Many say the strongest presence is felt in her former bedroom. It is said that her spirit is quite mournful, and apparently her battle armor and axe remain on display as well. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Eden Brown Estate. This estate is located in Nevis, which is the smaller of the two islands that comprise the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. It is said that despite having just as much to offer, Nevis is often overshadowed by St. Kitts. That is, until people hear of this ghostly haunting. Eden Brown Estate is a former plantation that now lies in ruin. The estate was once owned by a businessman who was going to give the property to his daughter as a wedding present. Legend goes that on the wedding day there was a very mysterious duel between the groom and his best man that ended up leaving both of the men dead. Because of this tragic happening on what should have been her wedding day, the businessman's daughter remained unmarried and alone for the rest of her life, which meant that when she passed, there was no one to leave the estate to. Now visitors of the estate report seeing the spirit of a reclusive woman as she roams about the grounds. Aside from this story, who knows what other kind of horrors and absolute tragedies that this place has seen. In our number 6 spot today we have Bangar Fort. Bangar Fort is located in India just 100 miles southwest of Delhi. This place is pretty much completely abandoned as it is said to have had a curse placed on it. Apparently many many years ago a sorcerer tried to woo a local princess and when she rejected him he got so upset that he decided that cursing this town was his only course of action. I just have to mention that none of these are a normal reaction to being rejected and calling it an overreaction would honestly be an understatement. This fort now is closed to visitors after sundown because of all the spooky happenings that go on here. This fort is extremely beautiful so it's no wonder the paranormal doesn't keep people out. People have reported having extremely strong feelings of an otherworldly presence and even some have reported hearing voices that are seemingly coming from nowhere. In our number 5 spot today we have the Whaley House. The Whaley House is located in San Diego and it was built in 1857. The site that this family house was built on was actually the location of San Diego's first public gallows, so as you can imagine, that's a pretty good backstory for a haunted site. Right after moving in, Thomas Whaley reported that he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson who had been hanged at the gallows just four short years before the house was built. After moving in, the Whaley family began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, many of which actually happened inside of the house. The Whaley house is now a museum and apparently the family members continue to haunt the site. These paranormal occurrences are apparently often accompanied by the smells of cigar smoke and heavy perfumes. In our number 4 spot today we have Obvodny Canal. Obvodny Canal is located in St. Petersburg, Russia and this whole thing just really creeps me out. This man made canal was built in the late 18th century and ever since then there has been extremely strange occurrences at this location. Construction workers would complain of headaches, they would also sometimes even have random outbursts of violent behavior that was uncharacteristic of them, but the craziest, most unsettling part is what has given this location full cursed status. Many of these people have attempted to take their own lives. Sadly, most of the attempts were successful, but the 
few people who have been saved have explained that they have no idea why they did it. They say that they didn't really have intentions beforehand, and some have even said that they felt some sort of invisible force pulling them into the water. Apparently there are some sinister souls that live beneath the surface of the water, and there have even been reports of seeing a lady in white in the water before she suddenly disappears. Long story short, remind me to just never ever go here. In our number 3 spot today we have the Eastern State Penitentiary. The Eastern State Penitentiary is located in Philadelphia and of course it used to be a prison but it is now an abandoned and extremely haunted house. This prison used to house some pretty big profile prisoners such as Al Capone and Willie Sutton but it was different from the American prisons we are used to now. This is because this prison was entirely separate incarceration. The inmates would live, sleep, eat and everything else alone. When they were removed from their cells they would have hoods placed over their heads as well. Considering all we now know about how detrimental isolation is, this of course must have taken an immense toll on the prisoners. Beside this, there were also some pretty gruesome and horrible punishments in this prison, such as having prisoners tongues chained to their wrists. I'm honestly not even sure how you would do that, but apparently it was a thing. This prison now sees thousands of voluntary visitors every year, and there have been plenty of reports of some creepy paranormal happenings. These reports include seeing shadowy figures, hearing creepy laughter that doesn't belong to anyone living, and hearing footsteps throughout the prison. I feel like considering all that went on when this prison was active, it truly does make sense that this building would be a haunted one. In our number 2 spot today we have Raynham Hall. Raynham Hall is located in England and was built around 1620 and it is a large building on 7,000 acres, which is obviously quite impressive. The tale that follows this haunted building is that of Lady Dorothy Dolly Townsend and her husband Viscount Turnip Townsend. I can't believe a couple with the nicknames Dolly and Turnip have an evil history, but unfortunately, they do. The story goes that Turnip kept Dolly locked up in the house, which is obviously just terrible and very cruel. After her passing, it's no wonder she decided to stick around and haunt the house. Apparently, there was a photo taken of her ghost in 1930, and it is said that no one has ever been able to prove it was a fake. So, all you photo experts out there, take a look and let me know what you think. A lot of the places on this list now serve as haunted houses, but apparently this one is still lived in by the Raynham family. Hence the name. In our number one spot today, we have Forsyth Park. One thing I didn't know is that apparently the entire city of Savannah, Georgia is a pretty haunted place due to the creepy tunnels that are located underneath the city. But one of the most notable, highly haunted places within the city is Forsyth Park. Apparently, there used to be a hospital across the street, and there would be autopsies performed in the tunnels below the park. I personally feel like autopsies are already creepy enough, so I'm not sure if conducting them in an underground tunnel was exceptionally necessary, but hey, I can't change the past. Because of this scary practice, the park has seen a lot of paranormal activity since these days, and it usually is the sort of place where one second you'll see a strange figure, but as soon as you blink or look away, it disappears just as quickly as it suddenly appeared. Starting off this countdown, we have the Cursed Grave. Located in Gippsland, Australia, or Gippsland, I'm sorry, there is a gravesite inscribed with a curse. The grave belongs to James. James Mitchell, a man who died after falling down a mine shaft. His grave reads, and I quote, Oh, let my sudden doom a warning be to all. Here, while thou bendeth over thy tomb, thou may as quickly fall. If you say that curse out loud while at his grave, legend goes, you will unexpectedly die within the next couple of days. In our ninth spot, we have the Weeping Woman. Legend goes that a woman named Charlotte M. Sitton haunts the Adelita Cemetery in California. Apparently, back in the day, Charlotte lost both of her due to an epidemic. Being so distraught over her loss, she ended up taking her own life to be with her ch once again. According to locals, she hung herself by the local school. Now her soul is restless. She hasn't been able to find peace since. It's said that every Friday between 10 to 11.30 p.m., Charlotte appears by her ch grave. You can see her lurking about in a white dress, placing flowers down on her ch graves before heading out into the woods. Coming in at number 8, we have the Bleeding Headstone. The Union Cemetery in Pennsylvania is known to be a pretty haunted one. There's apparently a woman in white that lurks the area, and of course, a headstone that bleeds. The grave belongs to 19th century local William Musser. His relatives tried to replace the tombstone a number of times, but no matter what, blood always seems to continue seeping out of it. Turns out that William was stabbed and bled to death. 
In fact, on a number of occasions, a knife has appeared on the tombstone. Coming in at number 7, we have the Crypt Keeper. Imagine having a full on mausoleum for when you die. You're either super rich or super important, or both, if that happens. Anyways, located in the West Edmiston Cemetery in New York, there's a mausoleum for a woman named Eunice Welch. She died in 1922 while in her 70s due to natural causes. Nothing too eerie or unusual there. But what is spooky is the fact that her mausoleum is home to an undead Crypt Keeper. Apparently, if you knock on the door and wait, you'll hear some rustling from inside. After a few moments, someone will knock back. But if the Crypt Keeper is in a bad mood, he might yell at you to leave. A number of people have done this and have heard his eerie voice talk back to them. Now, you might be wondering, who is this guy that's haunting the mausoleum of this innocent woman? Well, it turns out that the mausoleum used to store dead bodies in there during the winter. There wasn't enough storage elsewhere, so they placed the bodies there until the ground thawed so that they could be buried. So it's believed that maybe one of the bodies that was placed there latched onto the area and is now haunting it. In our sixth spot, we have the Black Angel. Now, this one has to be the weirdest one on this whole list. But there's a Black Angel statue located in Fairview Cemetery in Council Bluffs, Iowa, that comes alive at night. Yes, you heard me. Apparently, this statue comes alive at night and flies around the grave. And you don't want to be anywhere near it when it happens, because the legend continues on, saying that the statue has been known to shoot fire from its eyes. Those hit by the eye beam will disappear forever. In fact, the statue apparently wasn't always black, but it turned black around the same time that it came alive. So some say that it absorbed the evil from the people buried around it, and the evil caused it to change color. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Black Agnes. In 1899, a wealthy businessman named John Hubbard passed away. But before he did, he had a copper sculpture made to be placed near his grave. The sculpture is of a bare individual draped in cloth with their head tilted upwards. It is said to be of Thanatos. Thanatos in Greek mythology was the personification of death, so kind of fitting. The statue is located in Greenmont Cemetery in Vermont, and of course, it's haunted. Apparently, some have seen its eyes glow red in the middle of the night. Others have heard blood-curdling screams come from her, but the scariest thing is that she has a number of people. Apparently, if you sit on her lap, death will befall you within seven days. So whatever you do, do not pop a squat on her lap. Moving on to number four, we have Smiley's Grave. In Garland, Texas, there is a single plot for an entire family that all died on the same day. They are known as the Smiley family. You have the mother, Belle Hall, the father, Chas Smiley, and daughters, Lilith Merle, Greta May, and Charlena. Turns out that on May 9th of 1927, the dad Chas Smiley took the lives of his wife and three daughters while in a fit of rage. After he calmed down and realized what he had done, he took his own life by hanging. Rumor has it that if you lay down on the grave at midnight and try to get back up, you won't be able to. That's because the ghost of Chas Smiley has got you and is trying to pull you down to hell with him. Coming in at number three, we have Cornelius Vanderblit. In the 19th century, businessman Cornelius Vanderblit was one of the richest Americans. As a result, he was laid to rest in a three-story mausoleum. Now his tomb was something else. It was massive, but also decorated like a Romanesque church in France. But it's also incredibly haunted. A number of people have reported different spooky encounters there. First, we have a female figure that likes to hover around the tomb. Apparently, a woman died nearby after a heavy iron door fell on her. So people think that the ghostly figure they have seen is her. Other people have seen like bright light orbs in the area. And some have seen Cornelius himself. If you try to trespass into the tomb, apparently he will appear in a gray suit and chase you away. And lastly, some visitors claim that when they have taken photos of outside of the mausoleum, that they later found a figure lurking in the back of the photo. Moving on to number two, we have Pinewood Cemetery. Pinewood Cemetery in New York is now abandoned, but the spooky legends associated with it still live on. In fact, to this day, taxi drivers hate driving past. It. 
That's because a number of them have seen terrifying things while doing so late at night. Apparently, a number of drivers have picked up passengers nearby heading home. However, while en route, a number of them just vanished from the back seat of the cab into thin air. How eerie. The cemetery is also said to be home of an angel statue that bleeds from its neck. And there's a crumbling mausoleum where people have seen a strange green glowing light orb floating about right where the coffins used to be. And in our number one spot today, we have the Vampire Grave. Now this is probably one of the creepiest legends out there. So apparently in Lafayette, Colorado, there's this weird grave with the words, born in Transylvania, etched on it. Local legends say that the grave site belongs to a real life vampire. In fact, there's a tree growing right on the grave. Legend goes that this tree grew from the stake that killed the vampire. To make things weirder and creepier, sometimes people have seen a tall, slender man in a dark coat with black hair and long fingernails lurking around the grave. Sounds like he's a vampire. Maybe mourning the loss of his vampire friend? I don't know. Some have reported him actually sitting on the tombstone itself. And one time, a police chief patrolling the area found a doll with pins stuck through its heart left on top of the grave. Nowadays, it's a popular ghost attraction. People love to go check out the vampire's grave with hopes to get a glimpse of of this eerie vampire man. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Berg Elts. This German castle dates back to 1157, so it's no surprise that there are many myths and legends surrounding it. The most common tale is that of a young countess named Agnes. Agnes was betrothed or promised to another noble, but after meeting him, she called off their future wedding. Apparently, this guy was just the worst, and also, even if he wasn't, no one could blame her for calling off a wedding that she didn't want to have. But of course, things quickly went awry. This noble guy was mad that she had rejected him, so the scorned lover laid siege to the castle. Agnes fought to defend her home, but she passed away during the battle. This is the story behind why her spirit is said to haunt the Burgild's castle, many saying the strongest presence is felt in her former bedroom. It is said that her spirit is quite mournful. Apparently, even her battle armor and axe remain on display as well. In our number 9 spot today, we have Huska Castle. According to folklore, the Huska Castle which is located just north of Prague in the Czech Republic, is built over a bottomless hole that leads directly to hell. The legend claims that the 13th century King Odokar II offered a pardon to any prisoner who agreed to be lowered into the pit in order to report what was down there. The first prisoner who was lowered into the pit only lasted 30 seconds before he started screaming. Legend goes that when he was brought back up, his hair had turned white and he had aged 30 years. He was also telling stories of half-human creatures that flew through the darkness with the horrific wings. The castle was built over the hole without things like a water source or any kitchens, and it is said that this was because it wasn't actually meant to be used by humans, but rather a place to capture the demons should they rise from this mysterious hole. The castle can now be visited as a tourist attraction, but enter at your own risk. In our number 8 spot today, we have Edinburgh Castle. The Edinburgh Castle is located in Scotland, and while it is one of the most popular tourist attractions, it is also apparently extremely haunted. It is said that many, many years ago, a piper was sent down into the tunnels that are below the castle, which connect it to the Royal Mile. The piper was told to play his instrument while down there, so that his progress throughout the tunnels could be tracked, but halfway through his journey, the music stopped. Sadly, the piper was never seen again. This had led to the story of the piper continuing to haunt certain areas of the castle. Apparently, he still roams around, and sometimes even faint music can be heard. There is also apparently a drummer who is said to haunt the castle as well, but he only appears when the castle is about to be attacked. Honestly, I didn't know before this that I wanted a guard ghost for myself. In our number 7 spot today, we have Bran Castle. This is a castle located in Transylvania that is often known as Dracula's Castle. This Romanian landmark is commonly referred to as the home of Bran Stoker's Dracula, and honestly, what could be more terrifying than Dracula? Well, perhaps the real person he is said to be inspired by, Vlad the Impaler, who is also said to have some sort of association with this castle. The building features beautiful, articulate designs and vast staircases, but it is also said to be the home to the supernatural. Maybe it's just the lore and the legends surrounding this piece of 
historical architecture, or maybe there really is something more sinister going on here. In our number six spot today, we have Leap Castle. This castle sits in Ireland, and it was built somewhere between the 13th and the late 15th century. Legend has it that this castle has seen an unnerving amount of gruesome deaths, so it is no wonder it sits on a list of haunted castles. Story goes that during a struggle for power within the O'Carroll clan, who are said to at the time have been known for poisoning their dinner guests, one brother rammed a sword into another. This other brother was a priest, and at the time he was holding a mass in the chapel of the castle. The chapel is now called the Bloody Chapel, and it is rumored to be haunted by the priest. To make matters even worse, during renovations to the castle in the early 1900s, those working here ended up finding a secret dungeon below the chapel where they found a ton of human skeletons. The dungeon was designed in a way that prisoners would fall through a secret trapdoor where they would then fall onto wooden spikes on the ground, where they would then die a slow and painful death, but of course not without the members above them being able to hear this horrific happening. This is all to say that the rumors of the haunting make a lot of sense. In our number 5 spot today, we have Belcourt Castle. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this very specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines or feeling a strange sensation and a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing these stories might be enough to explain the energy shift that some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of the chair by some sort of force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number 4 spot today we have Chateau de Brissac. This is a castle located in the Loire Valley in France. For years people have shared stories about this castle, claiming that that it is haunted. The most famous story has to deal with the castle's owner, Jacques de Brezzi. One day, Jacques caught his wife Charlotte cheating on him with another man, which is said to have driven him to take both of their lives. Now, it is said that the souls of Charlotte and her secret lover still haunt the castle to this day. People have reported seeing Charlotte wandering the halls, often wearing a green dress, and in the chapel of the castle. Legend goes that she had gone to the chapel to try and absolve herself of her sins, maybe in the hopes of not being trapped in the castle castle any longer. Here is the scariest part of this whole story though. I mean, aside from the killing, which is clearly the worst part. Her ghost is said to have no face, and instead is just two black big holes. This is why she is often referred to as the Lady in Green, or the Lady with no face. In our number 3 spot today, we have Vorgard Castle. This castle sits in Denmark, and it features the works of some of the most famous artists ever, such as Raphael, Goya, and El Greco, but while that is a fascinating reason why many people visit the castle today, there are some who visit the castle thanks to some gruesome stories of the past. The most famous of these dark stories is that of Ingeborg Skeel, who acquired the castle in 1578. Apparently, he quickly took the life of the architect who designed it so that he could never design another building quite as beautiful. It's a pretty insanely selfish reason to take someone's life. People today still report seeing the ghost of the architect around the castle, especially at night and dressed in white. People also report feeling an extremely chilling sensation in the castle as they pass one of the most famous of its dungeons. This room was designed so that a person wasn't able to stand up or lie down completely, and there were no holes for light or air either. Haunted or not, the cruelties of the past are bound to send a shiver down anyone's spine. In our number 2 spot today, we have the Palace of Versailles. In 1901, two women were wandering the gardens in Versailles, trying to find Marie Antoinette's getaway, when they found themselves lost. They ended up in front of an old farmhouse that had a really old plow sitting outside of it, when they suddenly saw two men walk past them wearing long greyish coats with small three-cornered hats. They could tell immediately that something was not right. They asked the men where to find the getaway, and the men told them to follow a path nearby that ended up taking them to a gazebo, where their bad feeling got even worse. They saw another man at the gazebo that gave them dirty looks, when someone else came running up to them, warning the woman that they were 
going the wrong way. This person explained to them that they should cross a bridge and then they'll find what they're looking for. The women entered a building when they saw a woman sitting and painting and wearing a very old fashioned dress. Suddenly they heard a door slam and saw a man running towards them. Again, this man explained that the entrance that they were looking for was around the back of the building and led them to their real destination where they met other tourists. When they finally got here, that bad feeling they had finally went away and they knew that they were safe. The woman then began discussing what they had seen because they were both pretty creeped out. It turns out that they didn't see the same things. One of the women said she never saw a woman painting. The two began to look at paintings of Marie Antoinette only to realize that the woman the one saw painting was actually Marie herself. They later also found out that the old farmhouse and the plow that they had seen had been removed from the property in 1789. It seems like these two women were definitely seeing some ghosts from the past. In our number one spot today we have the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City is located in Beijing, China and it has quite a reputation. This building used to be the Imperial Palace but it is now a museum and it sees a ton of tourists every year. This building has quite a history of death so it is truly not surprising that it may be haunted. Since the palace opened to the public in the 1940s there have been a ton of reports of paranormal activity mostly relating to a woman dressed in white. I know a lady dressed in white is a bit of a trope at this point but it is always scary to think of. After all it's not like the ghost gets to decide its outfit. Anyway apparently this lady strolls around the palace but she is absolutely sobbing which is very sad and quite eerie. I guess maybe it's better to encounter a sad ghost than an evil one though? At this point I'm just not sure. In our number 10 spot we of course have Alcatraz. Alcatraz is one of the world's most known prisons. It's a prison located off the coast of San Francisco and when it was active it was a federal prison. It became known as one of the hardest prisons in the United States where only the worst prisoners were kept. Apparently it was known for its poor living conditions along with starvation and horrible torturous punishments. There were many kids, and so much violence that it's not a surprise that people believe it to be haunted. Specifically in a section of the prison called D Block where a prisoner was complaining of an evil spirit in his cell and the guards found him dead in the next morning. There are many ghost stories even one where people have claimed to have seen Al Capone in the shower, hopefully naked. Not because I'm a creep, but because the thought of a naked ghost in the shower is just funny to me. In our number 9 spot, we have the Kingston Penitentiary. In Kingston, Ontario, Canada, there is a former maximum security prison called the Kingston Penitentiary. I actually visited this prison when I was a kid and I remember being terrified. It was so spooky from the outside. Anyway, Kingston Pen has a ton of stories told by people that have formerly worked there and people that have visited the prison. Stories such as feeling cold in strange places to experiencing gut feelings to leave where you are right now. There are stories and sightings of a ghost of an old staff member by the name of William Wentworth who goes up and down the halls and locks the cell doors. He was killed by what is assumed to be a prisoner, however his killer was never actually caught. He'll probably haunt the place until his killer is caught cause that's some major unfinished business. In our number 8 spot we have the Maxwell Street Police Station. Known for being one of the most violent and brutal police stations, it is located in a neighborhood called Bloody Maxwell in Chicago. So if that doesn't say it all then I don't know what to tell you. The city apparently was flooded with mobsters and the police station was filled with corruption. The dungeon in the basement is where the paranormal rumors come from. It was known as a place for and most criminals would never leave the station after going in there. People have reported the rattling of handcuffs on cell bars, as well as screams from past prisoners. It closed in 1997 and fun fact, the cast of Chicago PD get to hang out with the ghosts all the time as it is filmed there. In our number 7 spot we have the Mansfield Ohio Reformatory. 
The Mansfield, Ohio Reformatory was built between 1886 to 1910 and closed in 1990. So many of these prisons closed in 1990. There must have been a huge shift in the prison world in terms of how the prisoners were treated and whatnot at that time. Anyways, this prison is famous for being the inspiration behind the movie Shawshank Redemption, one of my mom's personal favorites, along with Schindler's List. She likes to cry. <laughs> it is known for being haunted, and so I had to put it on this list. Witnesses have reported paranormal activity in the basement where the solitary confinement cells were. People have reported seeing ghosts, hearing screams and moans from the former prisoners, as well as the haunting of one of the warden's wives who was apparently fatally injured at the prison. In our number six spot, we have the Tower of London. Apparently, it is known to be one of the most haunted places in London. It was meant to be a safe place for the royal family at first, then became a dark, horrifying place for prisoners. There are apparently thousands of ghost sightings here, and among them is Thomas A. Beckett, who is believed to have caused problems with some of the construction with the tower. But apparently, Queen Anne Boleyn is one of the most spotted ghosts. Many have reported seeing a headless body walking through the tower corridors, which would make sense as the tower is close to the site where she was executed. This is wild. I really want to go there now. I want to see a headless ghost. It would be better if it was nearly headless, like, you know, Harry Potter's nearly headless Nick, but whatever, this will do. In our number five spot, we have Old Richmond Jail. Located in Tasmania, Australia, this isn't the most widely known jail, but it is definitely one of the scariest, it seems. This place was built around 1825, and it has a whipping yard, a cookhouse, solitary confinement cells, and basically anything you can imagine a scary prison would have. It has many, many ghost sightings and is believed to be heavily haunted. From sightings of a lady in a pink dress, to ghost young ones, to feeling cold shivers and hearing strange noises, there have been too many encounters to count. Best to stay away from touring this prison unless you love ghosts and never mind proceed in our number four spot we have the eastern state penitentiary this is a prison that operated as a sort of solitary confinement. It opened in 1829 and was active until 1971. It was meant to psychologically harm the prisoners with the noise being kept to a bare minimum. Many who misbehaved were told in various ways, including what was called the mad chair, where inmates were strapped to a chair so tightly that their circulation was cut off. So yeah, it's understandable that it is props haunted. Many have reported hearing crying, screaming, whispers, and even footsteps around the prison. People have also reported seeing dark shadows, and even Al Capone once complained that he was haunted by a ghost named James Clark, who was a victim of the St. Valentine's Massacre. In our number three spot, we have the old Geelong Jail. It could be pronounced Geelong. I don't know. I tried looking it up. I think it's Geelong, we're going with it. Another Australian prison that is said to be pretty fierce. It was built between 1849 to 1864 and was open until 1991. In addition to being a jail, this place was also used by the Australian Army as a post-World War II detention center. It was also an industrial school for girls. So yeah, there is a mixed bag of ghosts at this place. Over 500 plus deaths occurred in this place. People have claimed that particular areas of the jail are haunted by a demon, as well as apparently an old guard haunts this place. In fact, there are reports of sightings in shock blocks, the walkways, the morgue, and even the kitchen, and it seems that perhaps it's more than one demon that haunts this place. Strange smells and violent attacks have been reported along with screams. Well, thank the Lord this place has closed up shop. I wouldn't wish a ghost haunting on even my worst enemy. In our number two spot, we have the San Lucas Prison. This is a prison that is located on the San Lucas Island, which is a Costa Rican island. Island. Many prisoners who were sent there saw the death penalty. The prison is notoriously known for its extremely poor living conditions and
torture methods. Apparently, about 60 men would be crammed into a cell at a time. There were cells underground used for solitary confinement, and get this, they were typically flooded with water and sewage. Just disgusting. Yeah, if I was a prisoner that was put in a room with sewage, you best believe I'm coming back to haunt every one of those horrible people that worked there that clearly should have been prisoners themselves. Did I mention the artwork on the walls that was made from human blood? Yeah, forgot that one. It's known to be haunted by a priest and a nurse that worked there, as well as obviously the former inmates. People continue to hear screaming, begging, and crying men till this day. In our number one spot, we have the West Virginia State Penitentiary. The prison is so haunted that they even offer ghost tours at this point. Well, might as well capitalize on it. I would. Apparently they also offer escape room type events and um, that sounds horrible to me. First off, it's a real prison and second, this is a prison that is known for its ghosts. What fun! Let's pretend to be prisoners and escape a real cell and hang out with the ghosts for an hour. Nah, nah thanks honey. <laughs> Anyways, this prison is known for having the worst of the worst criminals and many executions. So many of the prisoners were killed by other prisoners and what is suspected as by some of the guards as well. It is known as one of the most haunted prisons in the United States. Most of the ghost sightings comes from the North Hall, where the most dangerous criminals were kept, where people have reported shadows and footsteps. Apparently also the hole and the sugar shack underground have many reports of people feeling panic when down there and a paranoid feeling of being watched. I hope that's not where the escape rooms are. At number 10, Dock Street Theatre in Charleston, South Carolina. The Dock Street Theatre opened in 1736. It is one of the oldest theatres in America. A fire burned down the original theatre and it even went through an earthquake. The theatre's most flamboyant ghost is Nettie Dickerson. She was a lady of the night who was struck by lightning while standing on the balcony of the hotel. Now people report seeing a phantom of her gliding along the second floor of the theater. They say she has crazy eyes and is dressed in a red gown. Another specter is Junius Brutus Booth. He was a renowned actor in the 19th century who used to frequent the inn that replaced the theater for a bit. He was also the dad of the Lincoln assassin John Wilkes. At number 9, New Amsterdam Theater in New York, New York. The ghost of Alice Thomas haunts New Amsterdam Theater. She was once a Ziegfeld Follies chorus girl who won the title of Most Beautiful Girl in New York City. But since her in 1920, she has been haunting the 42nd Street Playhouse. To keep the spirit's mischief to a minimum, pictures of Olive have been placed at every entrance of the theater so employees can say hello and goodbye to her. Now that's something that I would like, you know, people can just say hi to me everywhere. Except it's not a photo, it's just FaceTime and I'm just always watching. That'd be funny. Anyways, mischief from Olive can be a touch on the back or something more. Once when staff at the theater were talking about the silent film The Artist, a stack of CDs went flying sideways. Right before that happened, someone said, I wonder what Olive Thomas would think of The Artist. And I take it she didn't really like it. At number eight, this is another one in New York, New York, the Palace Theater. The Palace Theater was once a big place to see some of the vaudeville circuit, and it is believed that some performers just never left. More than some, actually. Supposedly over a hundred spirits lurk around the theater. Apparently, Louise Bossalina, an acrobat who was majorly injured during a high wire act in 1935, sometimes recreates his botched performance. There's also a white gowned cellist, a little boy playing with toy trucks, and a sad looking girl that stands in the balcony. Even Judy Garland's spirit is said to hang around the Palace Theater, appearing near a door in the orchestra pit. I feel like that's a grand entrance. Just like, hello. Quite nice. Number 7. Now let's go to the other Palace Theater in LA. So this theater is the oldest movie theater in LA. It was once a place of live performances under the name Orpheum Theater. There were vaudeville performances before it became a silent movie venue. The palace is unique in that it has a third balcony that was once closed off from the rest of the theater for racial segregation. Although the doors were locked, performers would see mysterious figures in the balcony. This led to the balcony becoming a legendary venue for ghost sightings. The ghost reportedly seen the most appears often not on the balcony but on the stage. A woman dressed in white lace crosses the stage during performances and then disappears into the wings without a trace. I bet some people think that's just like a side character trying to get some extra time, but then they just disappear. Just a little extra stage time if you ask me. I'd do it. No, maybe. 
Number 6, Boston University Theatre in Boston, Massachusetts. So where the Huntington Theatre Company is now used to be the Repertory Theatre of Boston. It was where Henry Jewett and the Henry Jewett Players performed until it went bankrupt. It is believed that the late Jewett haunts the halls after he hung himself under the stage in 1930, but that hasn't been totally clear. There is also the ghost of the former wardrobe mistress who is now recognized as the Lady in White. She hangs around dress rehearsals and apparently whispered to one employee as they turned off the lights, I don't like it in the dark. Which just seems like a nice little, eh, get the lights on for the ghost here. Now a third ghost began to haunt the theater starting in 1999. In the summer, an employee found a decomposing body on a catwalk in the alley behind Studio 210. Ever since, the ghost, now called Girlfriend, haunts the dressing rooms and the second floor studio space. That one was actually pretty gross. Apparently. They discovered it because they smelt something dying, and then they just walked outside and maggots were falling from the sky. It's not fun. Anyways, number five, St. James Theatre in Wellington, New Zealand. This theatre in New Zealand's capital has quite a few ghosts hanging around. There's a friendly ghost named Yuri, and he's a Russian dancer who unfortunately fell to his death on stage, and he is said to be behind strange electrical occurrences. What is nice about him is that he supposedly saved the life of one staff member twice. Like imagine, not just once having your life saved by a ghost and you're like, maybe, and then a second time you're like about to do something, ghost saves you again. Gotta believe at that point. But not all ghosts can be lifesavers. Another ghost known as the Wailing Woman lingers around as well. She's the spirit of a failed actress known not only for weeping in dressing rooms. She is thought to be behind mysterious misdeeds that happen to female performers. A little bit jealous much, no need to be dramatic. Jeez. Understand other people need the limelight too. Over in Chicago, we have number four, Ford Center for the Performing Arts Oriental Theater. It was originally built as Chicago's Iroquois Theater, and the building was advertised as absolutely fireproof. But that was proven wrong by the deadliest theater fire in American history. A month after the theater opened during a sold out show, the fire happened. Over 600 people died. The building was eventually torn down, but the new theater was built at the same site, and people have said they have seen the spirits of those who passed away. The alley behind the theater is known as Death Alley because that's where bodies were stacked during the aftermath of the disaster, and that's where most of the apparitions are seen. And number three is Huvan Kuiguan Opera House in Beijing, China. This building, built in 1807, is a part of a complex of traditional buildings. The bright red building is one of the main performance sites of the Beijing Opera. So near the theatre during World War II, a philanthropist built housing for the poor. Awesome. But the thing is he allegedly leveled an ancient burial ground in the process of doing so. Because of this, people say they hear disembodied screaming and wailing as they walk through the theatre courtyard. If you are brave, throw a stone while you stand there. People say if you do, you will hear a voice shout at you to cut it out. They say it's the voice of those passed away and disturbed at the burial ground, but if you throw a stone in a public place, it might just be someone saying, cut it out. You know? Anyways, the next two are a bit longer because they have more ghosts and history, so please bear with me. At number two, Bath's Theatre Royal or Bath's Theater Royale, if you're feeling fun. So the biggest phenomenon at this theater is the butterfly phenomenon. It started in 1948 during a Little Red Riding Hood pantomime. There was a butterfly ballet with a glittering butterfly backdrop. During rehearsal, a dead butterfly was found on stage. Then shortly after, Reg Maddox, the theater manager and producer of the pantomime, was lighting the stage. He dropped dead of a heart attack. The scene was taken out since it was just seen as a bad omen, but then, close to the opening of the pantomime, a live butterfly was seen backstage. The scene was put back in and the pantomime was a huge success. So now it's believed that Reg Maddox lives on as a tortoiseshell butterfly. There are reported sightings that correspond with theatrical success. So if you see a tortoiseshell butterfly, that's Reg and he's wishing you good luck. Bath's Theatre Royale also has another ghost, the Grey Lady. People who say they see her say she appears as a figure of grey like smoke and people also smell jasmine when she is around. Allegedly her origin is that she killed herself after her husband her lover in a duel, or that she had unrequited love with an actor and herself in the absence of his love. Both ways, drama. A little bit of Romeo and Juliet in the first one, if you ask me. Now, she is said to be seen in the top left hand box facing the stage or the dress circle, and people say they feel saddened or depressed after they see her. She may be trying to share her pain. Again, drama. Number one, there's another theater royal, and it's also haunted. The Theater Royal Drury Lane in London, England. It opened in 1663. Take in how long ago that is, okay? It is the oldest continuing operating theater in London. There are a few ghosts at this theater, and the most popular are Joseph Grimaldi and a figure called the Man in Grey. Grimaldi was one of the greats that helped lay down the foundation of pantomime tradition, and he was a clown and comedian able to make hordes of people laugh even at his most ill. His ghost is known to give a mischievous kick to people working around the theater, and he is also believed to be the man behind the disembodied white face floating around the theater. This is since he requested that his head was separated from his body after death. Unique, but apparently it was done. Now all 
Also, there's the ghost of Dan Leno, and he is believed to be behind some pushing and hair tugging in the wings, as well as the smell of his lavender perfume. It is said he wore the perfume because he sometimes wet himself on stage. Just saying. But now, the biggest ghost known is the man in grey. He is the most well known. He wears nice clothes and a grey riding cloak and has a three cornered hat. He is seen on one side of the upper circle and then he walks across and then melts into the opposing wall. In 1939, more than half the cast of a show saw him while taking a cast photo. The identity of this ghost isn't certain, but workmen broke into a hidden room behind the wall the ghost disappears into in the 1870s. There, they found a skeleton. It was surrounded by remnants of grey cloth and had a dagger protruding from its ribcage. The story goes that it may be the remains of a young man that fell in love with an actress and won her affections. But this made another actor, another lover of hers, quite mad and the young man in grey in a fit of rage. Drama. Whatever the origin of the man in grey is, he is believed to be a sign of a successful run at the theatre. He may even push actors into better places to deliver their lines. Hu Guan Hui Guan Opera House creeps into number 10. This building was initially intended to house the thousands of people who had lost their homes, and this is during World War II. However, this building was constructed on an ancient graveyard, so it is said that these angry spirits are haunting the building. Today this building has been converted into an opera house and several tourists have claimed that they hear a screaming voice coming from a graveyard when no one is even there. Well, the yelling is obviously coming from down under. And legend says that if you throw a stone in the graveyard, an angry spirit will scold you forever. I don't think I'm going to be brave enough to even try it. There's absolutely no way. Burma Inn stabs its way into number 9. A guest was staying at this hotel when he was poisoned years ago by the head chef. The chef was so overwhelmed by guilt, so he stabbed himself to death that same night. Legend has it that the ghost of the murdered man now haunts the hotel constantly looking for the head chef so that he can get some revenge. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't ever want to become the head chef. Now, in at number eight, we're talking about Dragon Lodge. On the edge of a mountain in Hong Kong with a beautiful view lies a cursed mansion called Dragon Lodge. Built before World War II, it is said that the original owner of the property went bankrupt. The second owner of the property died inside the house. It is believed that the Japanese occupied this property and the front courtyard was the location for a beheading of seven Catholic nuns. During the time when the Japanese had control, seven Catholic nuns were executed here. Neighbors regularly complained about hearing weird and scary houses, and this is throughout the night. Oh, and also the last person to live here said that they saw a ghost of a child with thick matted hair, and they were wearing a white lace nightgown. Yeah, I think I'd move far away too if I saw this creepy ghost. Chow Ne Church creeps into number 7. So this church was built in the 20th century by the Catholic Church and it housed British missionaries who were living in Beijing. Local legend has it that the priest who originally helped build this church disappeared without a trace within the walls of the church and later on a woman committed suicide in the church. People have claimed that, that you can hear her screams in the corridor of the church and you can even see her spirits lingering in the halls. People have also said that once they entered the church, they feel a sense of doom and uneasy. Today the building is in the care of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Beijing. However, it still remains abandoned. People who live near the home say they can often hear the wailing screams of a woman coming from within. The story goes that the building was once owned by a high-ranking nationalist officer who fled the country for Taiwan following the communist victory. The Imperial Palace, Beijing, makes its way onto this list at number 6. This is without a doubt a staple when you're visiting China, but the Imperial Palace is also known to be haunted with poltergeists and ghosts. The Imperial Palace was built over 600 years ago, and it was the site of many executions, betrayals, and murders. When the palace was opened up to the public in the 1940s, staff members and visitors would report seeing a woman dressed in black, and when you go to speak to her, she would turn around, but she would have no face. Tac Tac School creeps us out in at number 5. This old and spooky abandoned school used to be a site of a Japanese 
during World War II. This place is infamously known as the most haunted school in Hong Kong because the girls washroom has the ghost of an old principal who committed suicide there and she is wearing a red dress. She will shriek at anything who is brave enough to get close to her. High Street Community Center, Hong Kong takes the number four spot. This building used to be occupied by Japanese soldiers who were executed and thousands of disobedient Hong Kongers. Later on, this place was converted into a mental asylum, but it has been abandoned since the 1960s. And that's the second floor. People say that sometimes at night, you can hear screaming people up there. And sometimes there'll be a demonstrate figure explaining to the flames up there. And so sometimes at night, Screaming can be heard from here. So, don't need to go see what he's up on that floor. Ghost, headless ghost running across there. I mean, inside that's across the corridor. Well, rumors have it that you can still hear the screams through the halls and a creepy figure roams the building. And if you make eye contact with it, the figure will burst into flames. Okay, so up next, number three is the White House compound. This is an ancient colonial building that used to be called the Mount Davis concentration camp. This used to be a place where drug induced torture, interrogations, and murders happened. So it's safe to say that this place is probably super haunted. Some people have reported that they have heard some loud, creepy screams at night, and they have seen some headless figures through the windows. Bride's Pool falls onto this list at number two. Don't let this picture fool you. I know this place looks beautiful and serene, but I wouldn't recommend you visit there. And that's because a group of pirates once murdered all of the neighboring villagers and dump their bodies in this pool of water. So now water ghosts supposedly haunts this area and they are still waiting for a helpless to fall in so they can possess its body. The Great Wall of China tops this list in at number one. This is regarded as one of the world's greatest wonders. It is known for its 5,000 mile long extension and stunning views. But during the construction, an estimated 1 million soldiers died while building the wall. Now visitors have claimed that they have seen the ghost of the soldiers walking around the wall, or they have reported that they have even heard marching steps. The north part of the wall is where the most ghost activity is reported. Lots of hikers have died around this area from very strange and unexplainable accidents.